Hello, Honors 110 students. Um, I anticipate this is going to be an abbreviated video lecture because um, we do have a group-led discussion for today as well. So I'm going to give uh, most of your time for uh, focusing on today's class uh, over to the group. Um, and I'll weigh in in the discussion thread um, with perhaps some additional questions or follow-up related to the Machado story uh, that I hope everyone read for today. Um, but I did want to check in um, with a few pieces of um, sort of logistical information and kind of going over where we are for this semester um, and more to the point talking about our final group presentation assignment that's coming up. Um, so first of all, um, to talk about where we are in the semester, um, so we're wrapping up week 11 now. Um, for week 12, we do have one more group-led discussion uh, from group 5. They'll be talking about the Yi Yun Lee story uh, extra, so I look forward to hearing what they have to say about that. And yeah, I probably won't record a video lecture um, for that one unless I have uh, more substantive updates that I need to give you all. Um, but for the uh, Thursday, April 16th class, um, I had earmarked that day as a final group presentation prep day. Um, so what I would have done would, would be to uh, have you still all come to class and have you get into your groups and just give you some dedicated time to all work together in the same time and place and ask me questions and so on and so forth. Um, so because we're now purely in the online format, um, I'm going to encourage you just to take that extra time. Um, I might post uh, something by way of announcement. Um, for that day, um, but I'm not planning to have any assigned reading for that day. I'm not planning to lead a formal um, discussion, although, yeah, I might just post um, a class discussion for that day just for the purpose of being able to answer questions, give some finer points about final group presentations um, for that day. But um, for those who have been looking ahead on the syllabus for that um, Thursday, April 16th class, um, it is as open-ended as it sounds like it's going to be. So basically, again, that's meant to be time to give you a little bit of extra buffer to, to work with each other on those final group uh, presentations uh, or final group videos as we're reframing it now. Um, for week 13, um, we do have one more course reading um, for the 21st and Elizabeth McCracken story called Property. Um, we're going to handle that pretty much like we've handled most of the readings where I'll give a short video lecture about it and give you some open-ended questions. We'll have our discussion thread. Um, but I, I don't really consider that story to be part of the relationship, sex, and love unit. I consider the Yi and Lee story to be um, essentially the end of that unit. But um, if people, um, well, if you still want to use that for, for your essay or presentation purposes, it's still fair game. Um, but that's sort of um, meant to be just sort of um, an additional reading that kind of brings together elements of a lot of different units. But also, I just think it's an interesting story for us all to read. Um, and then from there, um, our next three class present uh, the class three sessions excuse me are going to be focused on those final group presentations um the readings for the April 23rd class. Um, there's a series of poems um, and a very experimental essay by Todd Kaneko that I have posted to Canvas that are listed um, on the course calendar. Uh, I'm officially waiving those readings. Um, ba basically, what would ordinarily happen in class is that there would be time for the final group presentations, and then with whatever time was remaining, we would talk about those pieces. And I think that they're fun. Um, I, I think they're interesting, um, but they're certainly less essential to course content. So in our new class format, Format, all being online, uh, where you're already going to have two presentations to watch for those days and to discuss. Um, it just didn't sort of make sense to me anymore for us to have um, the additional reading on that day. So um, the readings are still there if you're interested. Um, I, I welcome and encourage you to read them. Uh, if we have any professional wrestling fans in class, you might especially get a kick out of these readings, um, but I'm not going to force you to read those. Um, no journal responses required, um, no, no formal discussion of them. Um, if you want to chime in on the discussion thread, I'm not, not going to stop you from doing so. I'd be happy to engage with you about them, but, um, but, but no longer required in terms of readings. Um, I will still require you to do the Ali Brosh readings, uh, Depression Part 1 and Depression Part 2. Um, we will discuss those um, on the Thursday, April 30th class. So right now, Part 1 is scheduled for Thursday, April 28th. Part 2 is scheduled for, um, excuse me, that was Tuesday, April 28th. It's Thursday, uh, April 30th. Um, so we're going to discuss both parts of that on Thursday, April 30th. So we'll still have two final group presentation videos uh, on April 28th. Um, and then for the 30th, we only have the one video left over. Um, and so then we will also have that discussion um, of the Ali Brosh piece. Um, it has an imposing page count on it. Um, it. It's somewhere in the vicinity of, I think, like 60 pages. Uh, rest sure this is based on a webcomic. Um, I actually think it's in some ways probably the shortest, simplest reading you've had all semester, um, even 
taking all 60 pages at once. Um, so, you know, just by sheer volume of pages, I would still encourage folks to get an earlier start on it. But for anyone who's seen Ali Brosh's work before, um, I know I've heard anecdotally that some students uh, have a psychology professor who uses these same readings uh, to talk about depression. Um, so so they, they're really simple to digest. I think they're funny in a lot of ways, um, but we will talk about those uh, for the April 30th class. Um, for those ones, I welcome you just do one journal response. Um, so uh, if, if it helps you or if you just kind of want to keep track of your, where you are on the reading, if you want to do more than one, uh, that's okay. I won't penalize you for it, but uh, I only expect one course reading for Depression Part 1 and Depression Part 2. And again, we'll discuss both parts of that um, in our April 30th online discussion. Um, and then looking ahead to the, the very late stages of the semester, um, we'll have um, final uh, readings for, for that, that part. Um, th those will be you know, fairly traditional in terms of, um, yeah, I'm just asking you to do the reading and we'll do a discussion thread about them. Um, similar to other portions, um, I consider these not really to be a part of um, the unit proper. Um, these are kind of follow-up readings. Um, they're kind of all-encompassing and I just think are, are sort of interesting to kind of reflect on a lot of things we've talked about over the course of this semester, um, and also bring up a few things that, that we haven't really, um, particularly in the last day of class, um, those readings get into a little bit more of um, thinking about um, life in terms of writing and thinking about art in some ways that we've sort of tangentially gotten to throughout the semester, but um, haven't really been a direct focus for what we're talking about. So, um, the other thing I should mention is just to keep an eye on essay number three. That's going to be due um, on for that Tuesday, uh, May 5th uh, class session. Uh, I'll probably push back the deadline to 11.59 p.m. on that day. Um, but just, just to not have that blindside you either while you're focusing on final group presentations. Um, I'll have the prompt for that ready and, and posted to Canvas, and I'll probably discuss it in a video um, coming up in, in one of these uh, upcoming sessions. Um, but, but mostly I want to just encourage you to you know, start thinking about it uh, very similar to essays number one and essay number two. Basically, it's just a pretty open-ended space for you to stage an argument um, about the topic of relationships, sex, and love um, using at least one of the readings um, in support of whatever you're trying to say. Um, so again, I'll have a prompt that it's similar to other times. We'll have some kind of you know, questions for you to kind of mull over if you're feeling a little bit stalled out on it. Um, but, but just to you know, kind of be thinking about it already, to kind of have it in your head, very similar to what we did for um, the other essays where it's just taking the unit on the whole and posing an original argument based on that. Uh, okay, so I hope that all makes sense. Um, so to go over to the, the final group videos assignment, um, my, my plan is to have posted this prompt um, by the time that this discussion thread goes live with this video, um, or if I haven't done that already, I promise I will do it very soon afterwards. Uh, as the time of recording is, I'm still putting some very you know final finishing touches on it. Um, I did have a little feedback about this with students who are interested in delivering their, their final presentations in more of a live format using uh, WebEx or Zoom or something along those lines. Um, I ultimately decided I want to keep this as a, a uh, non-live video format, um, primarily because for these presentations, it's not meant to be as much of a discussion that you're leading so much as the group um, giving more of a presentation. Um, so we will still have discussion threads for students to pose questions and, and talk about the ideas that the group brings up. Um, but this is meant to be um, more of the, the group kind of you know presenting to, to the room, essentially. Um, and so I felt like the, the pre-recorded video format still probably makes the most sense. Also, I, I'm sensitive to students who um, you know, have competing you know, priorities with their family obligations in this unusual time, um, as well as those who might not have um, you know, the, the proper internet capacity to, to attend a live class session, but rather are very carefully and strategically um, you know, going to places where they have Wi-Fi or where they have the space to focus at different times of the day. Um, so all of that went in the decision. I don't want people to think I kind of turned a blind eye or a blind ear or whatever that would, would be, um, to um, the feedback of students who were hoping to do this live. Um, I do understand that. I do understand the discussion is a little bit... Um, modified and in some ways less lively when it's asynchronous, when we're not all talking at the same time. Um, so I certainly sympathize with that. I'll, I'll take your assertion, especially if I'm doing this again for um, you know the, the summer or for uh, the fall semester. I hope we're back to kind of life as normal by that point, but uh, you know who, who knows where we'll be at that point. Um, but in any event, for the final group presentations, I'm just going to hit some of the highlights and let you look over the prompt for yourself to kind of you know get more details. Um, but I'm asking the group to do, similar to the group-led discussions, is to 
record um, a video that's 10 to 15 minutes in length. Um, I am going to hold you a little bit more strictly to that 10 minute minimum in this case. Um, again, I, I gave a little more leeway on that for group led discussions in large part just because um, since it's supposed to be leading a discussion, I recognize that you're, you're losing a lot of your content and not having you know, live discussion time uh, with the class. Um, in this case, because it is supposed to be the group posing an argument about something, I do expect you to spend at least 10 full minutes. Um, if you go over, that's fine. Um, I put a disclaimer on there saying that if you go over a half hour, um, I reserve the right to stop watching, which uh, I say a little bit tongue in cheek. It probably sounds more severe <laughs> in, in writing, which is part of why I pointed it out here. Um, that's largely um, to make sure you're not overdoing this assignment and also just kind of out of respect for your classmates who um, might have other obligations and might be really hard for them to you know, be able to consume um, you know, full uh, half hour plus videos, especially when there's two of them going in a day for, for many of these cases. Um, but your task again is to basically pose an argument uh, based on one or more of the units we talked about in class. If you want to try to take on um, all three units at once, that's certainly possible. If you want to do two at once, that's fine, uh, or just one of the units that's also fine. Um, but basically you're making an argument for a major takeaway um, that you have from the course on the whole. Kind of if you're only going to remember one thing, um, what that might be. So um, for this, um, I'm going to say a minimum of 75% of the time should be the group's original content. Um, if you want to um, you know, bring in an outside video, as a couple groups have done in different sections of this class already, um, th that is perfectly fine. Um, or if you wanted to you know, use other kind of media to your advantage that, uh, or, or kind of facilitate some sort of you know, more passive kind of activity somehow uh, with the class, um, all that's okay, but that should only be about 25% of the group's presentation time. The focus is more on your original content. Um, so that can be you just talking into a camera, as I've done for most of these video lectures. Um, that can be um, talking over slides, as some of the groups have done to varying degrees. Um, that, that can also be doing some more experimental things. And I, and I, I give you some ideas in the prompt. Um, if you wanted to, for example, produce a short, um, you know, kind of riff off of a commercial or, or a movie trailer or do something kind of comedic or a dramatization of something from the readings, um, that's all fair game. Um, and, you know, again, I, I don't require that. And if you're kind of thinking in a more traditional mode for the presentation, that's fine. You don't have to do that sort of thing. Um, but I will say um, that kind of unofficially, I, I do like to reward risk in these cases. So if you do kind of take a chance on something, um, rest assured that unless it crosses the line of really being offensive or really just kind of taking away from the argument that you're trying to make, um, you will likely um, not be penalized for it and potentially even rewarded for, for going kind of a little outside the box in those regards. So, you know, not required, you're not going to be penalized for not doing anything like that. But um, if you have ideas along those lines, um, I think it can be fun for the class and, and more to the point, maybe fun for the people making the presentation. Um, that's something that I think it's kind of lost um, in a lot of assignments, we just try to do, you know, whatever's going to get the best grade or whatever's most intellectually rigorous, which are valid concerns. But at the same time, um, I also think you should do something that you'll actually enjoy um, with an assignment that's this open ended. Um, so groups are required to use at least one course reading. Um, I do, I do welcome external research for this. There's not a limit on research sources that you can use. Um, but if you do use uh, outside sources and even for just the course reading or course readings that you're using, please do include a work cited uh, for this. That can be included in your slides if you're doing slides um, or you can just email that to me separately um, just as long as in some way your sources are documented appropriately uh, and all that. And uh, similar to the group-led discussions, uh, not everyone has to have a speaking role in this. So um, I, I will trust in good faith that everyone is contributing equally behind the scenes, even if they're not showing up equally in the presentation or the video itself, um, th that is completely fine. Um, as long as the group kind of all agrees to that, um, the only way that I'll kind of start varying up grades or kind of penalizing anyone is if the group kind of comes to me and lets me know that um, they don't feel someone's contributing appropriately, in which case we can kind of have that discussion and you know, maybe modify things as appropriate. Um, but okay, so again, yeah, I just want to you know, have that assignment out there, have it introduced. Um, again, you're going to have um, basically in lieu of a, a video presentation and in lieu of having to participate in the class discussion, um, an opportunity just to collaborate with classmates next week. But um, please do feel free to chime in with questions related to this. I'm sorry, this, this video has got a little bit longer than I intended for it to, but I hope all this information is useful and, and practical to all of you. But okay, um, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing um, what the group-led discussion yields and I look forward to seeing what you all have to say about the Machado story. Story, but thanks again for watching.